friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here today to talk about making rhubarb wine, my thoughts on it, and how I plan to use it. So this isn't going to be an entire detailed winemaking video. If you would like more information on making wine or mead of any kind, I will link to the entire playlist in the description box down below. So I have a video specifically on mead making. I have a video series on wine making. It's a four part series. And then I also have a couple of other videos in there like you'll find one on the many uses of homemade wine even if you do not drink. So let's get on to the rhubarb winemaking. Now even though I've been making wines and meads for many years, this was my first time making rhubarb wine. I've made rhubarb infused mead, but to make a wine straight from the juice of the rhubarb was a little bit different for me. So let me start by talking about my process that I used for this. Now I did a little bit of looking around online to see how other people did their rhubarb wine. How did they get juice from the rhubarb while still keeping the rhubarb raw? Because that's pretty important to me when I'm making stuff like this. I try to keep the juice as raw as I can. And one method one lady had was simply putting the rhubarb into bags and or containers of some sort with some sugar. And that's all she did and let the sugar extract the juice from the rhubarb. And I thought that was a pretty good idea, but I thought and to also help speed up the process, I would freeze it. So I didn't put as much sugar into the bags of rhubarb. I use these reusable one gallon bags like this, as you can see in the picture, filled them full of rhubarb and might have put maybe a whole cup of sugar all together. I just kept sprinkling the sugar on as I was adding the rhubarb in there. And while I was in the process of filling it, if I didn't have the bag full yet, I would just put it in the freezer because my goal was to make sure I froze the rhubarb thoroughly before I tried to press it out, knowing that the freezing process would soften and break down the rhubarb. I ended up, I think, freezing up a total of four big bags. So I wasn't sure how much I would need to get a gallon, so I wanted to be on top of things. I, and I ended up with about a gallon and a half of juice. So then I went ahead and froze up some more rhubarb so I could make the second, finish off the second gallon. I initially was only going to do one gallon to try it out. Then what I did to get the juice out, and this was really effective, was I used my apple press. Now I have a video showing how I used the press to do the apple juice that I will also link down below because that's going to be a little bit more detailed. But basically all I did was take the... I pulled the rhubarb out, let it thaw. You wanna make sure that you put whatever fruit you're pressing inside the little bag, if you're gonna get a press like this, the little mesh bag, and then fold the mesh bag over the top of the fruit before you pile on all your wood pieces. Now the wood pieces are what you're using to press, and the smaller wood pieces are what you put on there to help be able to increase the height so you can really press it down. And that's gonna be based on how much fruit you actually have in your basket that you're pressing. So then I just kept cranking it and pressing it out and the juice just flowed out of that rhubarb wonderfully. It was a lot easier than when I used apples straight from the tree and was pressing those out. So then I took my juice, since there's very little sugar in rhubarb, I believe I added three cups of sugar for each jug. Now if I was using a really sweet juice, I would only start off with two cups of sugar per gallon. So three cups of sugar, then at about the one week mark, I added another cup of sugar to each one. You wanna make sure you don't start off with too much sugar in your wine right from the start because that can either slow or prevent the fermentation process. So even though you need sugar to ferment, too much right at the start can keep it from doing anything because sugar can also be a preservative, so you gotta remember that. After you mix your juice with your two to three cups of, of sugar, and I recommend organic cane sugar, I don't recommend using something like coconut sugar or any other sugar that's really high in minerals like molasses or anything like that because that will have the same effect as too much sugar. Too much minerals can slow or prevent a good ferment, so I recommend going with cane sugar. Now if you're making mead, that's made with honey. Mead is honey water, 
and you can add some kind of fruit to it to infuse it and give it flavor that and I cover that in that video I mentioned so the other thing that you will most likely need is some kind of fermentation starter some people even use bread yeast when they do that I have never used that there's also a wine yeast you can purchase but what I do and I've always done no matter if it's wine or mead is I make my own fermentation starter it's incredibly cheap or even free to make and in this case I use my rhubarb fermentation starter since I had already made one from dehydrated rhubarb I had done years ago and so you can use dried or fresh fruits or herbs to make your fermentation starter that's why I say it's virtually free because you can use whatever you have. I've even made a fermentation starter using dandelions and red clover. So free things growing in my yard. I've, made, I've used all kinds of things. And the whole idea originally came from the ginger bug. It's the same idea if you're familiar with making a ginger bug. If ginger is really expensive in your area or you can't grow it like is our area here or have a hard time growing it, then use something else that's free for you. So I will link to my in-depth video down below on how to make a fermentation starter. And I believe I talk in there about all the many things you can make it from. I talk about how you can keep it alive for a very long time and you don't have to keep making a new one before you go to start wine. You just keep it alive and it's very cheap and easy to do. So, and it works great. I use it for fermenting just about anything from eggs, to kimchi. I've even made loaf breads and pizza crusts using my fermentation starter. So I believe, and I go over all that in that video. So make sure you check that out if you're new to winemaking and you've never made a fermentation starter. In one of my original videos, I said about the two week mark, a lot of it depends on the wine that you're making. I'm finding it's actually best if you're going to add more sugar to do it right around the one week mark rather than two. Uh, at least once it gets really busy and you see it start to slow down in the bubbling process. So what I mean by that is you're going to have your airlock on there. Your airlock is going to have your water in it. That's to prevent oxygen from getting into your wine. This is important. This is why you need proper equipment such as a drilled rubber stopper and then your airlock. A balloon does work and I've done it before. I just don't recommend it. I recommend getting an airlock. These are cheap. It's worth it to invest in. You can get actually either a set of three for just a few dollars with the rubber stopper or even a full set of your glass gallon jugs with the rubber stopper and the airlock. That's all you need to get started and it's pretty inexpensive. So I'll put a link down below to, I don't know if it's a set of two or a set of four jugs and four of these, but uh, obviously the bigger the set you buy, the better deal you're going to get in most cases. I'll link to the one that I think is the best deal, but you might want to only get just a single set if you're just getting started and not sure how serious you're going to get into this. But I'm pretty sure once you get started, if you're new to winemaking, you'll probably find that you would like to have several going at a time. The reason it's important to prevent the oxygen from getting into your wine is that oxygen will turn it to vinegar. We're not trying to make vinegar here, we're trying to make wine. So that is the purpose for the water in the airlock. But you also need the airlock for the gases that will build up in here to come out to be able to be released. Otherwise, you will explode your jar, jug, or shoot the top off which that can still happen with an airlock if you have a lot of pulp in your wine. So you want to check it all the time, especially once it starts getting very, very active. You need to keep checking it. You might need to keep taking the airlock off and rinse it out and get the pulp out because it can clog up the airlock. And then that can then cause uh, explosion. I've had that happen on I think two different occasions. I still have a stain up here on my ceiling from one of those times. Anytime I start a new wine I put a cake pan under the jug because some of them will get more busy than others. Not all of them will do that. You'll find that some and usually those that have more pulp in the juice are the most likely to do this and they'll just get so active that you can't keep up on it and you might even during that time find it best 
to set that jug in the sink and cover it with a cloth, it usually will only do that for about a day. In that short period of time, it's not gonna turn to vinegar if you can't put the airlock on it or keep the airlock on it. And then once it calms back down, then you can put the airlock back on. And I've had that happen to wines when I go to add that next cup of sugar. I had it happen to one of them, one of these, because I wasn't thinking, sometimes I forget, don't add the sugar directly to the wine. I would say take up to a quart at most of the wine out of the jug, put it in a separate container, add your sugar to that and mix it in well, then slowly pour it back into the jug. That's going to prevent it from bubbling over. What will happen a lot of times if you add your sugar directly to your wine, that, that next cup of sugar, at the one week mark, it just goes crazy. It will start bubbling and it will just start foaming and sometimes even start shooting out the top of the jug. So you want to make sure that also when you're adding that, I would say make sure you got it in some kind of dish or even in the sink when you're adding that increased amount of sugar. So again, separating it out, mix the sugar in and then still recommend putting it in slowly while you've got it in the sink or some kind of receptacle that can catch whatever comes flowing out of there. So it takes a standard time of about 30 days from start to finish to for you to have a completed wine. And then after that, you got to do your racking and that's all explained in that video series. I don't want to go into all that here. So if you're new, you will need to check out that full series. If you choose to age your wine, I usually don't. I actually find I like my wine better when it's more fresh rather than aged for a long period of time. That's all going to be a matter of choice. Now, when I did, went to do the second gallon, I still ended up with a lot more juice than I expected. So I had another whole quart of juice left. And so what I did was decide to, I, I didn't want to do another whole gallon of wine. I decided to just turn that into a soda, which I also used the fermentation starter to do. And while it was good, I was really surprised at the flavor of the juice. It was not at all what I expected. It had an almost salty flavor to it. And to the point that I thought, did I add salt? instead of sugar to my soda and to my wine i ended up tasting some of the juice that didn't have anything added to it and noticed it still straight from the plant had this little bit of salty flavor in it i thought that was just really odd because i've never noticed rhubarb ever having a salty flavor so i did this morning look it up to see if rhubarb naturally has a high sodium content well no it doesn't it only has five milligrams of sodium per one cup of rhubarb. So I have no idea why it tastes, tastes salty. And you might think that sounds really gross, but it's actually pretty good. It's just different. It's very different. And as a result, here's what I decided to do. So we have an event this weekend, family's coming over. And so with this, part of the reason the color of this one is different Part, there's two reasons why. This one I added a few currants to this from my plant since I was pressing out the rhubarb anyway. I had picked some currants, maybe only a cup or so. So that naturally gave it a little bit of a darker color. But this one also has some ing added ingredients which brought it back up to here. And what I did with this was I decided to do some experimentation thinking because of that kind of more salty flavor that it seems to have is to give it a flavor that will make it taste more like a margarita straight from the jug. I started by experimenting with smaller amounts first before I came up with these ratios. Then I took this, which by that point was down almost a quart, but not quite. I added one cup of pure lime juice and then I added one cup about of honey, a good raw honey. I actually took it out of the jug, put it in a bucket and mixed it well in there to make sure I could get the honey fully dissolved into the wine as, and then mix that lime juice in there really well. And it's not sweetened lime juice. I'm talking about this one here, the Santa Cruz Organic Pure Lime Juice, no sugar added to it. Added about a cup to this and then a cup of the honey and sure enough i've got that nice flavor so basically this is going to be a rhubarb margarita and no need for salt in your glass because that natural salt flavor that seems to be in there already gives you that flavor now if you don't drink at all 
and what I plan to do with this one, I'm not going to do the same thing with this one, I believe this would be a really great marinade for using in especially carne asada, but really marinating or sauteing anything in that's a more savory type food. So that's my plans for this and also for using like in, in my sauces, like when I do my Italian sauces, I like to add wine to the Italian sauce and I also like to add wine to my pastas that I'm cooking to add that flavor in there. So these will be perfect for any of that. That's how I made the rhubarb wine and that's my thoughts on it and how I plan on using it. And if you've ever made rhubarb wine before, what, were, what was your experience? What did you think of the flavor? And how did you end up using it? Go ahead and share your experiences and thoughts down below. And please don't forget to check out those other videos about the fermentation starter and the winemaking and so on. I'll be linking down below. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.